All right, just waiting a minute or two, see if he already joins us. So we don't, uh, we're going to have this live now, but also it will be recorded. It will be uh, sent out, so that way if you can't make it uh, at this time, uh, it will be there uh, in the future so you can see it. Um, as people are starting to, to uh, log in, um, before we get started, I just want to say, first of all, um, please, 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 whatever you do, there's enough stuff going on in um, our country that we please do not listen to the news that you hear on social media because a lot of it is just false and it just gets people in, in, in chaos and in panic mode. Uh, listen to your local news. I mean, to me, that would be the better of the two options, of course. Um, but please try to stay away from the social media part when it comes to that because there's a lot of false information out there and I just think um, that it's just it's wrong. It's, it's wrong to, to go by that. Um, and one of the reasons why we're, our, we are where we are is because of, of that and, and there's a lot of craziness. And we know that by we've gone to the stores and we've seen people go completely nuts um, in the stores um, and I have seen the actual videos of, of those things so um, please uh, just try to wait, stay away from the, the news of social media I know we're always on it every day obviously we're here doing this now but but we need to stay away from that kind of stuff because again it's just gonna lead us down a path um, that we're not gonna like so anyway like I said in the video yesterday part of our uh, part of what I do is I want to do a little bit informal you know, we see a lot of churches, or bigger churches, and even medium-sized churches can do live video, and, and they're doing it with their, their band and, and, and so forth and so on, but um, they're trying to make it like a normal thing, and I'm not saying nothing against it, trust me, but um, we're not in a normal time, and I want to make it more personal, more um, interactive if possible. So, with that being said, uh, I just want you to know that uh, we're doing this because um, we love we love the church, and we we not only not only people that attend uh, Brooklyn Park Community Church, but we also love other people outside of that, and and that's going to be a s part of my devotional today, uh, saying that and talking about that, those things. Um, if you have a Bible or, or your smartphones, um, turn over to Romans chapter twelve. Romans chapter twelve uh, is where we're going to uh, spend a few minutes in there. And while you guys are turning there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, just pray for us. Um, so let's go ahead and, and, um, and uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, again, we just want to thank you for, for everything you, you, you've done for us. We thank you, Father God, for even in the situations that we are in now, we know, we know that you are in control. We know that there is nothing we can say, nothing we can do that changes this thing, that you have everything under control. You knew this was going to happen in the beginning of time. And I know for a lot of people that may not be um, uh, news that, that, that they uh, want to hear or, or even think about that's true. But we do know that because we know that you're an eternal God and, and, and you've, you, are from the, you are the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and Omega. So Father God, as we spend the next few minutes just uh, um, diving into your word and just um, uh, of a time of, of, of devotion towards you, I just pray, Lord God, that we will remember that. And that, Father God, that you have everyone's best interest. And even though we don't see it, we know that you come out victorious. So, Father God, I just pray that we would trust in you and we have faith in you to believe in your word and to believe what you have said to us um, is, is to be true. And we ask this in your name. Amen. So, I want to read from uh, Romans chapter 12. I'm just going to read four verses, or five verses, 9 through 13. So, if you're there, um, usually when I'm in church, I'll say, you know, when you guys get there, give me an amen so I know you're there. Um, but I'm going to assume that you all are there. So with that being said, let me go ahead and read Romans 12, verses 9 through 13. And, it's, and I'm reading from the ESV. It says, Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in in tribulation, be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Uh, let's let's talk about this word love for a couple of minutes. We know that it, it's more than, than a feeling, right? It, it, it's an action. You know, I can say that I love pizza, um, and but that doesn't mean the same love that I have for my wife. And I know you've heard that phrase before, but let's just think about that for a moment. Um, 
what it really means is actually meeting the need of someone else, right? We're meeting the need of someone else and, and, and even at a personal expense, um, whether it may be financial, whether it may be some of your talents, whatever it may be that God has given you, that is what our, our job is to do. And, and, and it's by far needed at this time in our, in our lives. Um, that is why Paul says that, that love right there says love must be genuine. It must be genuine. It, it, it's, it's not hypocritical. Um, and we need to understand that, that, that God has, has put us in a place that, that our words mean a lot more. Uh, when we say that we're going to do something, we need to follow through and do it. Um, and so, so, you know, let me just give you a couple of quick stories that, you know, we've been in need of a couple of things. And we'll just put on Facebook and, and our neighbors um, have come and said, hey, well, I'm at the store. And um, do you need do you need that? And, and yes, we'll need that and, and vice versa. And so the, so it's been helpful to be able to not just say, hey, I'll pray for you, but to actually go out and do something for them. So. We need to be make sure that we're not hypocritical in it because back in, in Jesus' day, that's a lot with the Pharisees. Ph Pharisees would just talk about good game, but they actually weren't following through with it. And they really weren't showing true love. So we have to make sure that we're, we're showing that. Uh, and we're in a position right now that, that we're refrained. We're, we're refrained from meeting together as a group. Right? We can't... We can't go and, and have our normal fellowship time of, of uh, in a church setting, and we can't get in groups of more than ten. And, and, and so we have to find other ways. I, you know, I look back and think about this. Thirty years ago, to have virtual church would be something we would never even dream of, and, and it's amazing. Um, I don't know why I say this, but it's amazing that God knew this. And so he, he allowed the, the people to come up with the technology to be able to do these things. I mean, to me, that's just, that's just amazing. Um, we weren't thinking about that stuff. You know, I, I remember uh, growing up watching the Jetsons. And I'm a little bit off subject here, but I remember watching the Jetsons and uh, you seeing these cars that are, that are floating and, and going through there and, and robots as, as your maids. And, and I'm thinking, you know, we're there. We're right there. Which is awesome. Um, which is awesome to know that that God knows everything ahead of time. God knows what's what's happening, and so we're not to be left out. And um, I forgot to mention a little bit earlier uh, when we started that having a devotional, having a sit down, I call it Sunday sit down. If, if you you might not know this, but in the ancient days, do you know that the 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 one who was bringing forth the message, the the, the rabbi or, or the the, or the priest, they were actually sitting in a chair. Um, and, and preaching and, and teaching the word while everyone else stood. Can you imagine that in today's church, where church's services go for an hour and a half and, and the preacher gets to sit and everybody else gets to stand? So I wanted to be let's make this a little bit more informal uh, with that being said. But anyway, uh, back to that. I, I, I digress. Uh, love is associated with emotion. Okay, I, I'm not saying it's not, but it starts with a decision. To, to to compassionately and, and, and righteously seek the well-being of others. So it's just more than saying, hey, I'll pray for you, but it's actually going out and doing something. And since we're not meeting together, and since we don't have that, con that constant contact with one another, we need to find other ways of doing that. Um, one of the things that we can decide to do um, today is we need to reflect some things. You know, we talked about refraining, we're going to be refraining from each other, but we need to reflect at this time that that... that on everything that God has done for us, that He's given us, um, there have been times. Um, I, I I go out my backyard porch and I, I look across and I, and I see a family who you never saw in the backyard. Now they're in the backyard. They're spending time together. They're actually building a. As of today, they're they're building a trampoline for the for their children. Um, that may not have happened if this didn't happen. So. We have to understand that God's in control and God knows everything that's going on, and this has been helpful to um, to see these things. But I want to look at verse eleven. So it, it says, you know, it says verse nine: Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, um, outdo one another in showing honor, and, and that's awesome. When I do premarital counseling, I'll you know, it's not a fifty-fifty relationship. Some people think that that you know, we'll, I'll meet you halfway. It's actually a hundred, a hundred. It's it's actually giving everything out, trying to do not for a competition, but out doing and, and pleasing your spouse like like nothing else. Like sh that that your spouse is number one, and and I feel that a lot of marriages would even stay together if if we had that kind of thing. So so this 
um, what Paul's teaching us that we need to outdo one another. And, and again, not as a competition, but you know what? I'm going to go all out for my neighbor, not just my family, but, but for my neighbor. But verse 11 says, Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirits. This has the idea of, 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 of boiling water. And, and, it, and it, so if you're fervent in spirit, you're boiling for the kingdom of God. In other words, you're fired up to serve the Lord. This is a time for us to be fired up to serve Jesus. You know, we get together in the church service and we say good things and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But, but and, and, and I tell, the, I tell Pastor Darrell and myself, have, have told us that our mission field is as soon as you walk out the doors. And, and your mission field is as soon as you walk out your house. And, and people need to see uh, Jesus in, in us. So, so that's it. You're fired up to serve the Lord. And it, it's, 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 like a, it's like a kid that you see that who's tired. And they're really tired that, you know, they just want to lay down or they want to be, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, you decide that you're going to do a game with them that some may love to do. We all get that. We all seen that. They get excited. They, they get excited about it and, 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 they, and, and they, they do it. They play that game they love and, 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 and they, they just, just do everything they have with enthusiasm. Because why? They love it. And, and as we're showing affection to one another, it was a fervent spirit that... We need to have that spirit of we we want to love to help others, and especially in this time of need. Um, then going down to verse twelve and, and verse thirteen, it says, "Rejoice in hope and be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality." Now, this scripture is talking about helping bro other brothers and, and, and uh, sisters in Christ out, and and that is that is a primary thing that that we should be doing. And again, one of the church members uh, called, uh, we put on Facebook that we needed something, and one of the church members went and bought it um, for us. And that was just something that was an, um, something we do. We, we help each other out. So uh, that's one thing. But one way that we can serve God and, and love one another is, is to share with others, right, and their needs, right? So, so when you walk out that door, you, you say, hey, I'm going to the store. Neighbor, do you need anything? Whether it's, a, whether it's someone that you go to church with or whether it's just someone who lives next door. Um, but it also says it's to, to pursue hospitality. I know it doesn't say there, but that's what it's telling us to do, that this is to seek, to seek to show hospitality, and that's our job is to pursue it. And See, see, God gave us a job, and, and, and we don't know how long. Uh, we already know there are some states that are, they've, unless you're an essential employee, you're, you don't get to work. Um, and I don't know where you are in, in that that fall in that category and does Maryland get to that? Maybe I don't know, but again, God's in control, so I always make sure that I remind myself of that because I have to do it myself. Because I look at the world, I see doom and gloom, and I realize God's in control, and I have to believe that because that's what His Word says. And so, so God's giving you a, a job, and, and, and it, which brings in you money, and 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 it pays for your house. And, and, and pays for everything you have, and, and, and grace gets us the house that we have, and and, and and grace gets us our vehicle that we have, and and and, and grace wants us to sh to use that to help others. So even though that we may not be the richest people in the world, but our neighbors may be worse off. They may not have a job. They may have been laid off. We know that um, unemployment is 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 is, go is on the rise. So. Um, if God has given that ability to help out, and what is what's a dozen eggs, right? What's what's a loaf of bread if we can find it? You know, what's a case of water to your neighbor? But just show the love that, that you have for them, and then knowing that's what you that's what they need, and most importantly, they'll see Christ in you, and, and that's what it really comes down to, right? Um, we all we do all these things. God says that nothing is done without the it's everything's for His glory, and and we do that. We show His glory by actually helping our neighbors out so whoever that may be so in closing i told you i was going to try to keep this as, as short as possible as a devotional um what's next so what do we do next what i just talked about what do we do next first focus on your family focus on your your family not just the ones in your household but focus on your family maybe you have some grandparents who who who, who live uh, far away uh maybe they don't even live in maryland maybe they live in another state i don't know but focus on your family make sure that they're well taken care of make sure that that as 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 a household you're you're talking about the things of god and and knowing that whether your kids see you on tv or or here on the or or where they're outside let them know that god is in control so focus on your family the second thing is, is focus on your neighbors. We need to focus on our neighbors, whether they're Christians or not. 
let them know you're there, you're going to the store, vice versa. Um, I've seen more people in our neighborhood who aren't Christians helping other people out more than I see us own Christians doing it. And, and that, that, again, is a, is a fault as well as mine. So as you go out to the store, you know you're going to the store, call your neighbors out, yell out the window. Um, you don't have to be six feet apart, right? You can tell them, hey, I'm going to the store. Is there anything you need? Just show that kind of hospitality and that love to them. Thirdly, probably most importantly, is focus on yourself. Take the necessary cautions um, when you're out, right? We know that it can catch, and it's, you know we've seen the videos of uh, of the partiers down in Florida and these these kids who who think that they're immune to it. Um, they're not. No one is. And um, so just focus on yourself, but not only just physically, but also spiritually. Take the necessary steps with your own relationship with the Lord. Make sure that you're in His Word every day. Um, we are, can't meet. We don't have Bible study, but but we want to try to stay connected with you all as possible. And, and let me know, and I'll tell you know right now, um, as, as God's my witness, is that if there is a need that you need, and we can help in any way, whether it's me, Pastor Darrell, or anyone of the church, please, please, please let us know. You can um, email me. You can uh, if you have my phone number, you can call me, you can text me, whatever. Please, we want to be able to help you in any way possible. Um, I, we, we ordered out last night, and there was a part on, the, on there. And you say, well, I don't want anybody to get too close to me. Well, there was a, there was a uh, on the, you, you, when you sign out and you pay for it, there's a part where it's called no contact. And what they'll do is you write in the book, no, uh, write in the, uh, the information, no contact. And what they do is they'll text you or call you, hey, your food is on the front porch. Or, you know, they're leaving, your food's on the front porch, that way you can go out in there. Same thing. We can do the same thing. We don't have to contact, hey, do you need something? Hey, uh, so you get there, hey, neighbor, it's on your front porch, you can pick it up. So we can still do it without being close together. Um, so keep that in mind. Focus on your family, focus on your neighbors, focus on yourselves. We do these things. As, 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 as God works through all this and, and God's in this, that this is going to work out. We know it because God wins. The end of the Bible talks about it, that he wins. So we even though this is a temporary uh, uh, tribulation, if you will, this is, is, uh, this is what it's going to be. And we know that God's in control. Um, I want you to know that we're going to be doing this as long as possible uh, until, I, personally, I would like to say this is the last one, that we're going to be back in church next week. I highly unlikely don't think so. Um, um, I did, did hear CDC actually say this, not, not social media, but they want to quarantine people for eight weeks. Like So I'm assuming that schools will not continue after this week. I'd probably uh, maybe go longer. I don't know. That's that's. I'll let the local news tell me that. I'm not gonna listen to social media, but but I'm pretty confident it's probably gonna be longer than what it is, especially since we have states that are closing down. So keep keep with your kids. Keep sharing Jesus with your kids. Keep doing those things. And if you have any questions, please holler back at me. Uh, you can email Pastor Darrell. We'll, we'll, uh, he's watching, and he'll he'll put this link up there. Um, and he can put our, our church address, web address on there. You can email us um, if you have mine. He can put my my personal on there. Um, if you have our numbers, call us, and we want to help you guys out. So I hope you guys are having a great, great weekend, in spite of everything going on. Um, and just keep Jesus in the center of your life. And I'm telling you, God will bless you. All right, guys, have a great week. I'll tell you what. Let me uh, let me close in prayer. Before we do it, Father God, again, we just uh, thank you. We, we thank you because you are in control. And Father God, as is, is, is great as things, uh, or, or dim as things look, we know how great you are. And Father God, I just pray that we, as a church, we will show the love, not only to all their brothers and sisters in Christ, but we will show the love to those who don't know Jesus. Because now is the time. Now is the time to tell others about the great love that you have and the hope that you have for them. Father, they may not see it and they may be depressed. And Lord, you can take all that away from them. So I pray, Father God, as we leave this place, as we leave our homes, that Father God, that we will be out there in that mission field to share the love of Jesus. And we ask this in your name. Amen. You guys have a great rest of the day. Great week. We'll see you back next Sunday. I will text some of you as we go throughout the week. Make sure everything's good. I hope you guys do it return. And as I always say at the end of service, don't forget to tell someone how much you love Jesus. God bless all.